Well, thank you all for your patience, and uh, I'd like to at this time introduce to you Dr. Lester Lashi. Did I pronounce it right the second time? All right. Yeah. Or, or less. Uh, he's a professor of psych psychological or, or, right, sciences at Kansas State University. He's also associate director of the cognitive and neurobiological approaches to plasticity center. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, Les first became passionate about renewable energy and electric cars when he was 16 years old. Nearly 40 years later, he found out about a new startup company, Tesla, that was dedicated to making all electric vehicles. Les finally got his own electric car with Tesla when they came out with the Model 3. To share his passion for electric vehicles, Les has organized a local group of EV enthusiasts called the Flint Mills EV Club. Now many from the EV Club are here today. He's got a few of us, so. And um, anyway, I'll turn it over to Les and let him talk for electric vehicles. Thank you so much, and I apologize for the delay. Uh, I lived up to uh, being the absent-minded professor because I brought everything except one thing, one little thing, my laptop this morning. So I had the bag without the, the laptop. Uh, so my wife brought it. So sorry to keep you guys waiting. Uh, hopefully it will have been worth the wait, but you'll find out, you'll, you'll decide. Uh, and I want to give a big thank you to several people. First of all, uh, the Midwest Dream Car Collection for inviting us uh, here today. Um, and also to Doug uh, for hosting and for uh, keeping you guys entertained uh, while I waited for my laptop. Uh, and for Julie Keenan of the club, who's at the back, and uh, who basically uh, has uh, arranged for our talk today. Uh, met with Doug and the folks here and uh, helped us set this up. And then my uh, colleague Dan Andreessen uh, at K-State and in the club helped me to put the talk together today. And I just want to thank all any other members of the, of the club who are here to help today. All right. so. What I want to talk about uh, is first, I want to just talk about um, Tesla and uh, EVs, electric vehicles, uh, for about 15 minutes. Then I want to talk about uh, electric vehicles not named Tesla. Uh, and then we can do question and discussion about uh, the Teslas that we got, this beautiful uh, original Tesla Roadster here and this beautiful uh, Tesla Model X here. And then uh, Julie's got a beautiful Model S out in the front. And I've got my uh, Model 3, which I was going to uh, wash, but I was so busy with the preparing the talk. So it'll look like a real car uh, also in the front. OK, so. Uh, since this is the Midwest Dream Car Collection, let's start with the Dream Car, uh, and that would be the new Tesla Roadster. Uh, and so here we have a video of, of it. And we'll get some specs here as it starts to move. 1.9 seconds, 0 to 60. Yeah, 250 miles an hour, uh, 621 miles of range. Yeah. Now, how does it feel to ride in that? Only a few people have gotten to do that so far because it hasn't uh, entered production yet. But uh, when they introduced the uh, Model 3, they uh, gave a select number of folks uh, rides in it. And so, and many of them were uh, taking videos, so we can see some of their reactions. Oh my God! Woo! Holy smokes! Holy smokes! Holy Holy smokes! Holy smokes! Holy smokes! 
insane. Okay, yeah, I would love to uh, take a ride on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So there's also that's just that was you know the uh, one of the concept cars, but they're also talking about a SpaceX version because as you guys probably know, Tesla is run by Elon Musk, who also uh, runs SpaceX, and so uh, he's putting the two together. Uh, and so for this uh, package, which we only really know about so far through tweets, okay? So uh, here's one where he, Elon Musk said, the uh, SpaceX option package for the new Tesla Roadster will include about 10 small rocket thrusters arranged seamlessly around the car. Those rocket engines dramatically improve acceleration, top speed, braking, and cornering. Maybe they will even allow a Tesla to fly. And he said in a later uh, one, he meant by flying like short hops. Um, and uh, so here's some of those uh, SpaceX uh, thrusters that could be used. Uh, and then later, uh, Marquise Brownlee, who uh, has a, he's a well-known blogger, uh, he said, the thing is, I feel like you're not joking. <laughs> and Elon says, I'm not. We'll use SpaceX cold gas thruster system with ultra high pressure air in a composite overwrap pressure vessel in place of the two rear seats. So he's not joking. Uh, and then uh, somebody else had uh, posted about, reposted or retweeted that and Elon said, the intent of the new Tesla Roadster is to beat gas sports cars on every performance metric by far, no exceptions. Thus transferring the halo crown effect gas cars have as the top speed leaders over to pure electric. So, and as you guys may know, when Elon Musk sets his mind to something like making a new kind of rocket that can uh, take off and land rather than just uh, having the first stage burn up as it enters the atmosphere in the second stage, he's like, no, we're going to have the rocket that goes up and it comes down and you reuse it as many times as you want. He's like, that's just like with uh, when you take a jet plane, uh, when you fly a jet from Kansas City to New York, they don't destroy the jet on the way. It's not a one-time use jet, right? And so if he, he, he could do that, and when he's saying he wants to have the fastest, best sports car in the world on all metrics. I think it's a serious uh, goal that he's probably gonna, you know, maybe there'll be uh, new ones competing, but this is a serious thing. Now, nobody really knows what this is gonna be like except the folks working on it at Tesla, but other folks out there have been trying to conceive of what it might be like. So here is a video that some fans uh, put together of what, and this was using a lot of uh, complicated math to, um, and engineering to actually uh, make this video. Yeah, all right, so, how does this uh, new Roadster stack up against other supercars, like the Bugatti Chiron, is that right, or Chiron? Chiron? Chiron, okay. How, how would it stack up against the Bugatti Chiron? Uh, well, uh, from zero to 60, 1.9 seconds versus 2.4. The, with the SpaceX package, it, they're uh, estimating it may get it down to 1.1 seconds. Uh, but that probably won't be street legal, in fact. You, but yeah, okay, so, but the, the one that you could buy normally would be the 1.9 seconds, okay. 
Quarter mile, 8.8 .8 seconds versus 9.8. Uh, 0 to 100, 4.2 seconds versus 5. Top speed, there the Chiron uh, slightly edges it out. They're, they're capping it at about 250 for the Roadster uh, versus capping it at 261 for the Bugatti Chiron. But the range will be 620 miles for the Roadster versus 286 for the Bugatti. Uh, seating, four versus two. And price, 200,000 versus three million. So, uh, and this kind of, I didn't make this uh, comparison thing here. There's a lot of them on the net. I just picked this off the net. And a bunch of people were making them, so somebody else came up with another way of putting this comparison, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You could get ten of the Tesla Roadsters for two million versus one Bugatti for three million. So if you have two million to throw around, and you you know give one, to, you know if you're the uh, give one to your spouse, you got kids, give one to each of your kids, uh, depending on the size of your family, you know, give them to your, your aunt and your uncle, your nephews and nieces, uh, neighbor, a good friend, you know. You could all go uh, driving together. And you'd still save a million bucks. Okay. Now, other people came up with other comparisons. Uh, they thought, well, okay, let's not, uh, you know, smash on uh, Bugatti too hard. So somebody else came up with this one, the Roadster versus a Pop-Tart. And, you know, uh, well, range about 12 months uh, and seating infinity. You can, <laughs> and it's definitely not $200,000. So, yes. All right, so, but now let's, uh, now I want to switch from dream cars to reality. And I do think that that Tesla Roadster will eventually be reality, hopefully in the next couple of years. And we'll be able to see it here at the dream car collection since they've had one on order. Let's talk about Tesla's long-term plan, okay? And their long-term plan most simply is growth through continuous reinvestment, okay? So, uh, and we can see that if we look at their production and cost history for three of their key models that they've come out with, and those are the original Roadster right here, that was their very first car, and then the Model S, which we have out in the front, uh, that's Julie's beautiful, uh, red Model S, and then the Model 3, which I have, my unwashed blue one, uh, and also the Y, uh, because some folks are kind of putting the 3 and the Y together, and I'll, I'll explain why. Okay, so, all right, so let's look at the uh, number of those that were produced. So, starting with the Roadster, the original Roadster, uh, they had 2,450 of them that they made over uh, several years. And for the price, the base price, that was about $112,000. Okay, so their first one, that's what this guy. Um, all right, now, after that, they wanted to make a sedan. They're like, not everybody can buy a uh, sports car, but a lot more people will buy a sedan. So uh, for that, over, this was through the end of 2019. I got this off Wikipedia, so, but uh, 263,000, okay? And the price, oh, and so the 263,000 is about 100 times more than the uh, 2,450 Roadsters they made, right? So. So they upped their production by about 100 times. Their cost was about uh, two-thirds. So they reduced the price by about one-third. 
Okay. And then for the model 3 and the model Y, I've put those together, you can sort of see these are actual real size comparisons. It's not a, a difference in how far they, away they are from each other. So uh, they look a lot alike, and they are a lot alike, but this, uh, the Y is a crossover SUV with a uh, hatchback, and so it's got 40% more uh, storage capacity. That's the main difference. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and I think the people that would buy the one that would have bought the three, uh, now that the Y is available, most of them are buying the Y. So they're kind of, uh, when I was getting numbers, they were putting the two of them together. All right, so for production, uh, as of uh, the last quarter that was reported, overall they've made about 1.3 million of them. So that's about six times more than they've made of the S, and in uh, since 2019 versus 2012, so in a much shorter period of time. Okay, and for the price, base price, about 37.50, which is actually what the average car price in the U.S., average new car price in the U.S. has been. Uh, so, and about half of the price of the S. Okay, so you can see that their production numbers have been steadily increasing and their base prices have been steadily dropping. And that's been the plan all along from the very beginning. Okay, so, so there's other Tesla vehicles that I haven't mentioned. I'm just gonna briefly uh, mention them here. One is the Model X, okay, so their first SUV with the uh, gullwing doors, and then uh, the Tesla Cybertruck, which is supposed to uh, start production next year, and the Tesla Semi, which is also supposed to uh, start production next year. And people have been spotting uh, you know, test ones on the road uh, for these two in various places. Now, let's look at their factories, okay? Starting in 2010 and up till the present. So they started with uh, their factory in Fremont, California. That they, got, uh, they bought the NUMI plant that was between GM and Toyota. They had uh, joint production there. And so they bought that from them in 2010. And so that's where they uh, made the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, and the Model Y. Okay. And then in 2014, they were like, okay, but we really need to focus on battery production. All the cars are all electric, and so they wanted to have a dedicated battery factory. So they made that in uh, Sparks, Nevada. And by the way, you can see here, they're uh, on their way to tiling the entire roof with solar cells so that eventually it'll be uh, net zero uh, for emissions. Okay, and so, that's up, that started in 2014. More recently, uh, in 2018, they uh, broke the ground for their Shanghai uh, Gigafactory uh, and built it within a year and started production after one year. And so that way, they don't have to be shipping all across the Pacific Ocean for sales in Asia. Okay, so they actually can produce them there, and then all their Asian sales can be uh, going out of there. So, and they've been producing the Model 3 and the Model Y there. And uh, next Saturday, they're gonna have the opening of the Gigafactory in Berlin. Same idea, that way they don't have to be shipping across the Atlantic Ocean, uh, and so, uh, there, they're gonna be making battery packs, powertrains, and the Model Y. Because they figure Model Y is pretty much gonna be their best seller. It meets all the, the points that, that people want. You know, it's a crossover SUV hatchback. That's the kind of standard car that is most popular, okay? 
And then uh, in late this year, they uh, will be opening a new Gigafactory in Austin, Texas, where they're going to be uh, focusing on the Cybertruck and the Semi. So uh, you can see they are expanding and expanding, constantly reinvesting to get more growth. OK, and that has really gotten the rest of the audio industry's attention. Uh, and so the rest of the auto industry has been joining in this uh, EV race that uh, right now Tesla is far and away leading. Nobody's even close. Most of them are basically considered to be five to ten years behind Tesla. But these are by no means uh, beginners in the auto industry. They're new to EVs, but they've got a lot of experience and they've got a lot of capital. And so that includes some of the really big players uh, in terms of numbers. So VW, Ford, uh, you know, we got Chevy, we got Toyota, so GM. Uh, we also have uh, quite a few luxury lines, okay, from Cadillac, Volvo, Mercedes, uh, Geely is actually um, a very big producer in um, China, okay? And then we've also got some dream cars for those of us that like uh, faster cars. Well, all of any EV is going to be fast, but uh, Jaguar, Lotus, Porsche, I would love to uh, check out the Taycan, and uh, even uh, Lamborghini. Okay, so, so yeah, this is uh, with this growth by Tesla and the growing numbers of sales, uh, the rest of the auto industry is now working rapidly to catch up. Okay, all right, so from that big picture, let's now narrow down to what matters to uh, somebody who wants or is thinking about getting an EV. So what does it cost? Um, and so for fuel, uh, for fuel per mile, it's about three, th three cents per mile uh, for an EV, okay? Uh, and maintenance per mile is about six cents uh, per mile for an EV. And if we look at the cost per mile of a personally owned vehicle in 2019 dollars, okay, uh, we can go back all the way to 1915 when uh, it was still kind of up in the air as to what kind of cars we were going to have. Would it be electric? Would it be gas? And then uh, after uh, Ford created the, the Model T, the, the car that changed everything, Okay, it went to gas. At that, so at the beginning, it was about 77 cents uh, per mile. This is $29, okay, for complete ownership of an electric car, whereas it was about uh, 70 cents per mile for a gas car, like the Model T. And it has actually remained pretty constant, uh, whereas, uh, as of 1996, when GM came out with their electric car that they uh, had internal battles for and eventually killed it, and uh, all the people who had taken possession of their cars, they demanded that they be given back, and they destroyed all of them. But at that point, it was about 71 cents. So it was getting uh, closer, much closer to uh, total ownership cost of a gas car. And then as of 2019, now it's down to just uh, 49 cents per mile for total ownership for an EV, but it's still about 70 cents per mile for an internal combustion engine car. And if we want to do uh, just for the charging cost only, because 
This cost is also for maintenance, because maintenance on electric cars is like nothing. I mean, there's so many fewer moving parts. In an in a internal combustion engine, uh, there are on the order of approximately 20,000 moving parts. And uh, in an electric motor, uh, it's more like around six. Okay. Um, so yeah, maintenance is just way, way lower. But if we're looking at charging cost and we want to make a kind of more of an apples to apples comparison, we can go with two uh, comparable Nissan models, the electric Leaf and the uh, internal combustion engine Sentra. And so uh, if you multiply the 30 kilowatt hours times 18 cents, uh, you get 540 for a 100 mile range, okay? For the LEAF, and 100 miles at 32 miles per gallon at, at a cost of 278 a gallon is about uh, 868 for a 100 mile trip. So if you multiply that out by a year, it would cost for gasoline for the Sentra about $1,000, about and for the LEAF, uh, about 650. Okay, so it's definitely actually now cheaper to uh, total cost of ownership and also for uh, the charging costs, which is one part of that, uh, to have an electric vehicle than uh, an internal combustion engine vehicle. So how do you charge your EV? Uh, well, the simplest one is at home, okay? Uh, or anywhere, okay? You can basically use, at the bare minimum, the bare minimum you can use a 110 uh, volt outlet. And that's gonna give you about three miles per hour of range, okay? Uh, but if you have a 240 volt outlet, now it, you're actually going to get 30 miles per hour range. Huge increase there. And, and 240 is what you would use for your uh, stove, for your dryer, uh, things like that. Okay, so here's just you just uh, charge in your garage. That's most of the time. Most people um, don't drive that many miles per day if you live in town, and so you can just be charging in your garage and you'll be fine, you'll be full, okay? If you're out on the road uh, and you really need to charge and that's all you got, I mean, even at uh, RV parks, most of them will have 110 or 240 uh, chargers and so you can just charge there, okay? Now, another option is when you're at work or if you're on the road and you're staying at a hotel overnight. Okay, then what you can do is use what's called a level two charger. Okay, and so that's gonna be six kilowatts. And so you get 30 to 40 miles per hour of uh, range that way. So if you're there for eight hours, then you've got eight times that. So uh, you would completely fill up um, your battery for let's say a battery that has 300 miles range on it in the night. Uh, or if you're at work and you work eight hours. Okay, so here's from K-State. They actually have uh, some level two chargers uh, at K-State, so you see folks using those. And here would be at a lot of hotels uh, will have them. Not all, but many are now having them. And if you're on a road trip, uh, and you just need to charge on the highway, then what you wanna use is a supercharger, and uh, Tesla has its own network of superchargers, uh, or a CCS charger, which is equivalent for non-Teslas. And that will be 150 kilowatts, and so it'll give you about 300 to 500 miles per hour of range. Okay, and so here you can see uh, Tesla charging station. And here is for Electrify America uh, with uh, a non-Tesla car charging. And Electrify America is also really working 
uh, to make a whole network across the US. So to make that um, even more concrete, here's from Kansas, uh, not all of the state, uh, the eastern half. Uh, and so, yeah, we see here's a map of where you can charge. Um, and we've got the gold or bronze colored and the green. The bronze colored ones are the superchargers and the green are like level two chargers. Okay. And so this is, if you're on a long road trip, you're going to want to be using the superchargers or the CCS chargers. So there's quite a bit fewer of those than the level two chargers, but they are strategically placed. So on every main highway, you're gonna have those about every 90 miles, okay? So, um, and this is all done very analytically where they look at the flow of traffic and uh, calculate out the needs for the batteries and so to make it even more concrete, if you're planning a trip and you're doing that in your Tesla, then basically this is in a Model 3. And so you have the screen. Okay. And then uh, you, you give a verbal command about where you want to go. And it will uh, give you a route like you would normally get with your GPS, but it's also going to have charging stations along the way uh, that you would need. Oops. Yeah, you can see all those red charging stations. There's a ton of them out in California. Okay, I did planning a trip from here at the uh, Midwest car, Dream Car Collection to Estes Park Colorado, because that, that's where I love going for vacations. Uh, and so what this shows is I would stop in Hayes, Kansas, uh, and do a 15-minute charge, and then in Colby, and do a 35-minute charge, and then in Lyman, Colorado, and do a 25-minute charge, and then that would get me there. And that's if I have a Model 3 long range. Okay, so, uh, so it just tells you, here's where you would need to charge and how long. Okay, and some people will be like, 15 minutes? Man, I could get gas way faster than that. But I don't know if you're like me or not. Some people just like sitting in that car seat for eight hours. I prefer to actually get up and stretch my legs a little bit, walk around a little bit, sometimes use the restroom, maybe get a snack. You put those things in there and 15 minutes is nothing. Um, and even 35 minutes if you wanna have lunch, uh, you know. So I also, one thing I do, so I've driven uh, to Boston and back in my uh, Model 3 and uh, up to um, Wisconsin and back, and just like this. And for me, I like actually, I, I, I have a step counter, and I try to get like 6,000 steps a day. Uh, and so while it's, uh, if it's 15 minutes of charging, I just set my uh, timer for seven minutes, and I'll uh, walk out and walk back. I get my steps. I don't have lumbar pain. So, yeah. All right. How about EVs not called Tesla? And so here are some really cool uh, other options. So Rivian is another new startup company, all electric, and they are specialized in SUVs and pickup trucks. They also have a big contract with Amazon for delivery trucks, okay? So, and they are just about to start shipping their uh, SUV and their pickup truck. Like, actually, I just was checking on it last night and there was a picture of somebody who'd taken delivery of their uh, one, so it's just starting now. So you have 800 horsepower, uh, 900 uh, pounds, 
of force uh, in, in torque, zero to 60 in three seconds. This is a pickup truck. Zero to 60 in three seconds. So this is like, uh, you know, the Rivian R1T electric pickup embraces duality. The EV pickup accelerates like a Corvette and has off, it's off-road like a power wagon. It also includes a kitchen sink, which I will show you. Yeah, so it's got uh, 11,000 pounds of towing, starts at 68K, uh, 300 plus miles of EPA range. EPA is an important thing to, uh, when you see the range, okay, that's not at 70 miles an hour. EPA is averaging like in town and highway. So when EPA gives range, that's, you know, like at 45 miles an hour. But, uh, yeah. So here are some of these cool tricks. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about the camp kitchen, which goes into the gear tunnel. So Rachel here, Hello. who's the lead engineer for this, is going to walk us through it. So we're going to pull it out. And Rachel, walk us through this and tell us uh, tell us about designing it and engineering it. Uh, we feel like I've got to do this. So. So she's the lead a engineer. In the last year, a lot of design iterations on this, but we've landed on something that we're pretty stoked about. So this is the cooktop. This is the sink module. It's completely modular design. So there's like cooktop module, sink module, water module here. Um, there's a little pop-out sink under here. Can you lift this? And uh, a hose reel in the water module there. So your hose will just sit here, and you can fill up your sink when you're doing your dishes. Um, we'll also have like a lighting system which goes in here, so we have two light poles that we'll plug in and some beautiful string lights that will sit up here. So that's a convection, um, power convection oven, which you could use even um, where there's the uh, forest fire danger. Because and all the cool kit in the drawers. Yeah, so when, when you get your camp kitchen, it'll come with a 30 piece snow peak kitchen set. These are, I mean, just wonderfully curated titanium plates, really nicely done by the team. Yeah, and then you've got all of your pots and pans in here, uh, pour overs and coffee pot for the coffee lovers. There's actually a gr coffee grinder in here, which is like one of my favorite things. Um, and a little charcuterie board for your nibble platters. So. Yeah, and this is uh, optional. This is an extra five or 10, I can't remember. Uh, but if you don't use it, then you can use all that space for storage. And so it's all modular. You can have it or not have it. OK. It can also do what's called a tank turn. Rivian has just released a video showing its R1T electric pickup truck performing a spectacular tank turn. The truck literally spins circles in place. Rivian says that both the R1T and R1S SUV are tank turn capable. We have seen the R1T do a tank turn before, but the video was not official. However, we do know that Rivian has trademarked the term tank steer, which makes an appearance in this video. It has also trademarked the similar term tank turn. This is further evidence that turning on a dime will be a feature at least some of the Rivian vehicles will have. Okay, so pretty cool stuff that Rivian is, uh, yeah, so it's basically the rotation of the front and rear uh, wheels allows it to do that. I've been getting a lot of questions about the camp Okay, so that's Rivian. So they've got a really cool new pickup truck. Uh, the Ford F-150, so best-selling truck from Ford, they are now have a, uh, they're working on this electric version of that. So uh, 563 horsepower, 775 feet pounds of torque, 10,000 pounds towing, 300 mile range, uh, emergency backup for homes. So you can actually use uh, the, the battery in the truck as a backup generator uh, when you have a power outage at your home. Okay. It also has a massive frunk. This is a term that uh, 
Tesla came up with the front trunk. Since there's no engine in the front, there's all that extra space. So it becomes a large extra trunk. So uh, yeah, you can see here, this is a very large frunk. All right, and you can also see here uh, that they're using it uh, to power this guy's uh, power tools. Okay, so he's actually charging from his uh, battery to use his tools. Okay, and uh, it's starting at 39K, and they will be shipping soon. And then GM has a Hummer EV. Okay, uh, this one also has 1,000 horsepower, 11.5 thousand uh, pound foot torque. 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, again, uh, so you have a truck that's powerful and also uh, can be really fast, 350 uh, mile range, starting at 80,000, should be available in uh, 2023, and it's got this interesting thing called the Crab Walk. Okay, and lastly, uh, since we're talking electric vehicles, you can actually ride your riding mower as an electric vehicle if you want, and there's a lot of people uh, now getting electric mowers, and uh, the leading manufacturer uh, is Ryobi. And so, uh, yeah, so here's a uh, zero turn lawnmower and it has very low maintenance as with all electric vehicles. So no gas, no belts, no spark plugs, no filters, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so with one charge, you can get up to 3.5 acres of mowing. Uh, and it's between uh, 4.2 thousand to 5.4 thousand. Very quiet and uh, yeah, this person gave it a very high rating on, well, it's getting very high ratings in general, 4.6 out of 5. And it says anyone with a four acre yard or less would be crazy to buy any other zero turn. No gas or oil, no belts, trouble free mowing, it just works. These should be on prominent display right beside the gassers. Yeah, and I know when I go to Home Depot, I see the uh, Ryobi mowers prominently displayed. And gosh, in my neighborhood, there's like, you know, in a three block area, there's at least like six uh, houses that, uh, families that have recently gotten an electric mower. Very nice and quiet, much better for your ears. Uh, yeah. So, and that's it. So uh, for my presentation. So as I said, now let's talk about the X and the uh, Roadster 
and then we can check out the S and the three outside. And any questions that anybody has? Yeah. That's not a question. About what's the lifespan on batteries on these cars? Is there a lot of talk on ten years or fifteen or so many miles? Or? Yeah, um, that's an excellent question because the uh, battery is the single most important uh, cost factor for an electric vehicle. Um, so, yeah, we don't really know yet because you you need like not just theoretical numbers, but uh, like the best thing is if you have actual reports from individual owners, and there hasn't really been enough time for enough of them, you know. And then you could you can take cases like this guy, uh, you know, has over a million miles uh, as a taxi driver in Oslo, Norway, with a Model S, and it's still going, you know. So. But that's just a case, an individual case. But I think they're going to be very, very long, because they're. This is a. Uh, this is actually, uh, in terms of engineering, one of the biggest, hottest areas to be in if you're uh, in interested in electrical engineering is batteries, um, and so there's huge emphasis on that, and lot of rapid development happening. But yeah, the so far, you know, it's been good um, in general. Great question. That was my question. But then what's the cost of the replacement battery? And how does that play into comparing a gas driven car expense to a electric car? Right. Yeah. I think what I've been hearing is that uh, the lifespan of the uh, batteries that are being produced, like uh, for Tesla, is equal to or greater than the lifespan of most engines. So like most engines in an uh, internal combustion engine car are certainly not expected to last more than 300,000 miles. But if you take really good care of it, and some people you know, can have them go even more than that, but um, I think that the estimate is that it's about equal to or better than the, that. And as far as the price, probably comparable. But I don't have the exact details on that. That's a great one, and uh, I would Google it. I think I just read the other day that to replace the batteries like on a Tesla X, it'd be about $14,000. Yeah, and if you were going to replace uh, an engine on a uh, SUV, comparable SUV, what would that be? Well, probably for the engine, about 4000 For the labor, probably about another 10000 <laughs> so, so, so probably pretty comparable. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> While we were talking, I took a quick look. Uh, Tesla's claiming about 10% degradation after 200,000 miles. So 200,000 miles is usually the life expectancy of most vehicles. So, yeah. Thanks. Ten, ten, uh, yeah, 10% 10, 10 drop, though, if you've got something in the projected range of, uh, I think, the 300. Yeah, roughly for the, uh, the extended battery. Right. You're losing 30 miles. Yeah. Yeah, that's incredible, actually. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Mm -hmm. I must have missed something, but uh, when you stopped in Hayes to charge up, how did you pay for that? Okay, and by the way, I, that was an example. I haven't gone out there. I've, like I said, I've gone to Boston and back, yeah. and uh, Wisconsin and back. I plan to go out to, uh, my next big road trip is gonna be out there. What you do is, um, so if it's Tesla, when you buy the car, okay, you're gonna be registering with them and you're gonna be uh, connecting with them on the internet because you get constant updates, like, you, you know, uh, on your software, like on Windows or whatever, or Mac, if you have a new operating system update, they update it. Well, Tesla is constantly updating their uh, software for the car, so you're getting new features and improvements constantly. Famous example of that was, uh, when the Model 3 was first uh, rated by Consumer Reports, they noted some uh, problems with the braking. 
And within one week, Tesla had uh, updated the software and it took care of all of the braking problems. Uh, so Consumer Reports made an addendum to say that the, the braking problems they had noticed were fixed within one week by software update. So the software allows you, it recognizes your car. When you plug in, it will be charging your account at Tesla, okay? And if you've already put a credit card on there, then it'll just basically do it. Just like if you have a auto payment for your car uh, payment to the bank or for, get, for the, you know, for your uh, utilities or whatever. But is it an arm and a leg or? No, no, no. No, um, it's, it is cheaper than gasoline in, in terms of the uh, mileage, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning. beginning. Well, I was gonna give them like an actual real number. Uh, my wife drove from Nashville to Manhattan in a one day trip. It was less than $30 to fill up uh, in St. Louis and um, Kansas City. That's what I Yeah, was. $30 total for the trip. Thanks. Thanks. Excellent answer. Other uh, questions or comments? Well, thank you all. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.